Alright, so my last strategy video did pretty well with you guys, so I thought I'd make another. To start off this game here, I rush right through up the left side and go towards the middle of the map. And something subtle I do here is I keep aiming down my sights because I know I'm in the middle of the map and I know I'm likely to encounter enemy players in this area because that's what people always do, they always rush towards the middle. And because I'm prepared and have my gun sights up, I'm able to win that first gunfight. And I keep going towards the right side of the map here and I run into an enemy player. And I start aiming down sight and shooting at them but then they zoom right past me. And what I do here is instead of continuing to aim down sights and keep shooting at them that way, I instead switch to hip firing. And that wasn't just a panic decision, I thought about that. So the reason here is we're in a very close range engagement. And so aiming down sights and making big adjustments because we're so close to each other is much harder to do. So I thought my luck would be better if I hip fired and tried to kill the person instead. And I got lucky this time and it happened to work out. But even if it didn't, that was the right move because I'm using an assault rifle and we're in close quarters, so the hip fire is probably going to be a better option than trying to aim down sights, especially when that person just zipped right by me and I might not be able to get my aim right on top of them. And right here I do something subtle again. I pick up this other weapon just in case I run out of ammo with my primary weapon. I am using the rewind payload, which does give you all your ammo back once you use it. But again, just in case I run out and I don't have my rewind available, it's just nice to have a secondary weapon. So if you do see one on the ground, pick one up because you never know when you might need it. Now moving on, I'm running towards that little tunnel I went through when I started the game off. And I noticed that two of my teammates die by looking at the kill feed and looking at the minimap, however way you want to do it. And what I do is I stop running and start walking towards that direction. That's just going to save me a little bit of time in case there is an enemy there and I do have to pull up my sights. Because if I am running, it does take longer to pull up your sights then and be accurate. So I managed to get lucky here. This guy isn't looking at me and even with my poor reaction time then, I was able to get a kill. So again now I'm rushing up the right side. I get lucky and win this gunfight over this player. And then I see another one. And right here, I make a calculated decision. I know that that other player got some bullets on me, so I'm already damaged. And I already stopped aiming down sights by the time I saw this player. So if I was to start shooting at them, I would have to pull up my sights before I could even start firing. And based on the way that player was standing and they were already looking in my direction for their dead teammate, they were probably already aimed down sights. So combining that with the fact that I already took some damage and I'm not aiming down sights, this gunfight is already very unfavorable for me. That's why I make the decision to use the rewind here. So that's just a really good example of knowing when to use the rewind and on top of that having the ability to use it quickly. So I've been using rewind pretty much all the time every time I play Infinite Warfare. So using it a lot will help you use it quickly in a panic situation but it's also important to note the situation and see if it's best to use it and sort of make that calculation on your own. And now I also don't rush back the way that I just used my rewind from. That's because what I've noticed is that most people, they assume that when you use the rewind, you're going to come back that way that you just used it to try to challenge him again. So what I instead do is don't go back that way and go around and try to catch him off guard. Because I did that, I caught him off guard and got behind him, so that strategy worked. But what I did here is I messed up, I didn't get any shots on him, and I alerted him to my position. So that's why I decided to run away, because he already knew where I was. And if he started to creep around that corner and aim, already aiming down sights, ready for me to come through, then that gunfight's unfavorable and I don't want to be in that situation, so that's why I ran away. So right here, right out of the spawn, I noticed this tripwire thing on the door. Based on that and some of my teammates' deaths in that area, I knew that there was probably someone in the corner on my right. So what I did is I destroyed that trip mine thing and then ran out of the door and boosted so that if someone was in that corner and they were looking at the doorway they would be thrown off guard if I were to just run straight out and boost and their aim would be off and I'd have a better chance of killing them. So my method here was good but that player actually wasn't in the corner and they were on top of that roof and I didn't even know that was a spot. But the point is that if you think someone's in the corner don't just slowly creep out of the doorway because they're probably aiming down sights at it. You gotta run through it and catch them off guard and that'll help you get a kill. Because he did kill me I go back for the revenge kill and something important I do here is I don't run out of that doorway because I'm playing frontline, right? So when you spawn, you have that automatic protection, that invincibility for a certain amount of time or until you leave the spawn. Because I know that that player is in that corner, instead of me just running straight out and trying to challenge him, I stay in the safe area so that I can keep my invincibility so that if he does see me and start shooting at me, he won't be able to kill me. 
So that's why I hesitate at the doorway for a second. And sure enough, I see him, and because I'm in the safe area, he can't do any damage to me. That could really help you win a gunfight. And then I run up the right side here to the street bridge area, and I pop to the right, and I automatically see two people. Instead of trying to engage in that gunfight, which, even if I manage to kill one player, both players are looking at me, so my odds of survival are tiny, I just decide to run away instead. And on top of that, I know that the player under the bridge doesn't have a lot of cover and they were running towards me anyway, so I assume that they're just going to continue rushing me and try to come up behind me. So I start to run away and then prepare myself for that player to come around and chase me. Because I predicted their behavior, I shot him in the back and there was no real gunfight there, it was just an easy kill. So here I managed to kill two players. But something you have to remember is, again, we're playing frontline, so I'm very, very close to the enemy spawn. So because I just killed two players and they're going to spawn very close to me, they're most definitely going to come for that revenge kill. So I know I've stayed in that area too long, even if it was only two players because of the spawn, so that's why I run into the building and try to get away and move towards my side of the map so that they won't be able to find me as easily and I won't die. And then another quick thing to note right here is I'm very very close to my streak if you look at the advanced UAV. I only need a couple more points so not even one full kill to get it. So instead of rushing out and trying to get it, I just sort of sit in the corner a little bit. It is a little campy but I'm so close to the streak that if I just wait it out a little bit, I'm more likely to get it this way than to take my chances in a gunfight. So I just wait here for a little bit until I do manage to get the kill streak. And I want you to take note of this position I take here. So I know I'm on the enemy's side of the map, so I know that they're going to be spawning on the other side of this building that I'm at. But because I know they're going to be rushing out of their spawn, if I take this position on this side of the building, when they rush out of their spawn, they're not going to see me because they're not going to be looking towards their side of the map, towards their spawn. They're just going to be looking towards our spawn. So in this position, it's actually a relatively safe position because it'd be very rare for them to check where I am unless they knew where I was beforehand. Because I'm in this spot, I'm going to be getting a lot of people off guard and shooting a lot of people in the back because they won't be looking this way. And that's why I'm able to get these two easy kills here are these kids not looking at me. One more thing I want you to notice here is I get a kill on the right side of the building here. I run to the left and I check it and there's nobody there. And then I go back to the right side, but I hesitate. I don't immediately go and check the right side again. And this is because the person who I just killed on the right side if they were coming for a revenge kill, they might have just rushed back up that side, and if they knew I was there and were prepared for me, if I popped my head back out, I might have lost that gunfight. That's why I hesitated a little bit and didn't go immediately, because I wanted to let a little more time pass, so that if they were checking that area, they might move on. So earlier in the video, I talked about that red trip mine thing, and then I thought that someone was in the corner and they were actually on the roof, and I didn't put all the instances in this gameplay, but that kid pretty much went up there the entire time, and he killed me a bunch of times. So I should have remembered that he was there. And in this clip here, I just run out towards that side of the map, and I'm not even thinking about it, and he manages to kill me again. But generally speaking, when someone kills you in a spot multiple times, or you can see that they're trying to rush that spot for a lot of the game, they're probably going to be trying to go to that spot the entire game. So every time you go towards that area, you should be checking for that player. Just do it constantly, because they're probably going to be going back there. So that's a mistake I made here, and I've died as a result. And to add one more small point to this, you can see I earned my advanced UAV, but I don't call it in. And that's because I'm conscious that the round's about to end, and it would be better to save it for the next round. And what I do in the next round here is also something important that you should know, is I don't call it in right at the beginning of the round. I wait a good 10 seconds to call it in, because if you call it in right at the beginning of the round, everyone's in their spawn, right? So it will take at least 5 seconds for people to start diffusing towards the center of the map. So that's 5 seconds of the advanced UAV you would have lost if you just called it in immediately. Because even if you knew where they were, you could not possibly get up to the center of the map fast enough to be able to use that information to kill them. So waiting some extra time for people to start working their way throughout the map is a good thing. Because that will let you get more value out of your advanced UAV. And then one final thing I want to mention here is similar to what I talked about earlier. So I see this guy coming out of that same doorway I was in earlier, and I notice that he has that invincibility on because he spawned recently. Instead of continuing to shoot at him, what I do is I get behind this lemonade stand, and I stay here for a few seconds, then pop back out to check if he still has that shield on, get behind it again because he does have it on, wait another few seconds, and then go back out and check again, and this time he doesn't have it off, so that's why I stay out and try to shoot him. 
So that's just kind of the flip side to something I said earlier. If you notice they're trying to use that spawn invincibility to their advantage, just either try to draw them out or just stay behind cover because you're out of their line of sight and the only way they're going to be able to kill you is if they run out of the spawn and they don't have that invincibility anymore or you don't play it smart enough and pop back out too soon when they still have the invincibility. So that's something useful to remember, and that's about it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new. You guys thought this was as useful as the last one. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you think about this. If there was something I covered that you liked, something I covered that you didn't like or disagreed with, or you thought there were some other things that I could have covered that I didn't. I always love to read your guys' comments, hear what you guys have to say, hear how you guys think I can improve this series, or do other things to help you guys get better in Infinite Warfare. So... Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.